Hi everyone, this is Chris Sinatra. I'm with Ryan Eichmann and Gina Flores. Gina was one of the teachers uh, this weekend at a cranial sacral course called Basic Elements 2, which is part of the Cranial Sacral Alliance that Don Ash is part of, that Don Ash was founded. And we're going to talk to Gina, we're going to ask her a few questions. But Gina, first, tell us a little bit about yourself so that people know who you are, what your background is. My background primarily started in dance and dance education. Um, Vis-a-vis that, I studied massage therapy, so I'm a licensed massage therapist. I'm certified in cranial psychotherapy. I'm a cranial psychotherapy teacher. I'm a clinical aromatherapist and newly certified as a Tibetan healing arts uh, vibrational sound therapist. And that really caught our attention. Your work with the Tibetan healing, healing bowls. Yeah. How did you discover that? What was the attraction to that? Yeah, so uh, I had a little health journey of my mm-hmm. own, and I found it difficult to find uh, cranial sacral therapists in my area um, that I felt confident working with me based on my health issues. And a friend of mine referred me to someone who did Tibetan bowl and vibrational healing, and it piqued my interest, and I figured. What do I have to lose? I'm going to give it a shot. And uh, I went for my first session, and uh, I was actually mind blown. Um, When I got up uh, after being treated, I actually felt as if I was having someone working with my cerebral spinal fluid and my lymphatic fluid and and my blood. And I actually felt cerebral spinal fluid moving in my system. And I actually could feel my my cranium and my sacrum moving. And I thought that this person um, actually knew cranial sacral therapy, and she said she knew absolutely nothing about it. And so I went home and I started to think about, well, water, we're primarily water, and the sound vibration was literally having a vibratory effect on all the water and all my cells. And uh, I think from that moment I decided at some point uh, I was going to want to learn how to do this. So I was just absolutely intrigued by it. And uh, as I said, its effect on the cells um, on a very micro level, but also just on a whole energetic being, even on a macro level. So uh, I got the sense of my body sort of expanding and broadening is sort of into my auric field and feeling the vibration from there. But it felt as if the work was not something that was being brought to me from the outside in but that it was something that was occurring from the inside and that expansion was coming from the inside out, which is what was so interesting to me. Um, So when it comes to these uh, healing bowls, is there, how does this work? Um, Is there more than one? Do they operate at different frequencies? Yeah, so the system that I've studied is uh, Nepalese, actually. There are two uh, different ways that the bowls are tuned. Um, So the Indian Vedic technique is based on middle C on a piano scale, uh, but in Nepal we start with the first F note and it's a system of fifths above the first middle C. The bowls are made out of seven specific metals and they're hand hammered. The way you can tell that a bowl has actually been hand hammered is a machine made bowl will have, a, a will have a very different tone, but B, you'll have a little a pinhole at the bottom of it, and so you can know that it's been sitting on, on something and being spun. Um, when the bowls are hand hammered, then um, different prayers are being said. So you're already instilling the metal with actually a vibration. I mean, think about it. You're already taking a flat sheet of metal, you're instilling it with a vibration, and then you're using that bowl to then hence produce more vibration. So I feel like the initial vibratory birth into that bit of metal is when the people are hammering. And it takes four people to make one bowl, and they all approach the metal from a, from a different space. And as I said, it's seven different metals. Uh, and I, I really thoroughly enjoyed the concept of knowing that the prayers are also, our words and thoughts are vibratory as well. So if a prayer is being said and a hammer is, hammering is being done to the metal, that there are all these beautiful overlayers of different vibrations. So the notes are uh, B, E, A, D, uh, G, F, C in a, in a scale of fifths. And then uh, the bowls correspond to different places on the body. So F bowl would be uh, considered a bowl that was the root chakra or the grounding bowl. B bowl is crown. 
Um, e bowl is your third eye. A bowl would be your throat chakra. D bowl is heart chakra. G bowl is solar plexus. And uh, C bowl is your uh, sacral chakra. Uh, so the, uh, the D was the heart? D bowl is heart. And then it goes fifth. Fifths, and they're fifths, fifths, right, starting with uh, either the F bowl or the B bowl. So every fifth note is the next, this is the next note change. Going from the heart. Exactly. And the bowls actually, so um, the tunings, the true tunings should be at 444 or at mm -hmm. 432, but nowadays mm -hmm. most musicians tune to 440, mm -hmm. which is actually an arbitrary tuning that was just designed. It's not the natural vibration. Of, uh, and I think uh, Chris and I talked about the uh, the Schumann uh, vibration, the Schumann resonance. So that resonance is actually tuned at 444, so it's not the natural. So the bowls are actually tuned to 444 or 432, uh, which is considered a heart chakra. But the D bowl is heart chakra. Um, the bowls don't specifically, you can use any small bowl. Uh, you can work with one bowl, you can work with two bowls. If you're working with two bowls, you always want one that's larger and one that's smaller. And, and you don't have to be concerned about, oh, do I have a D bowl on my heart? You can use a D bowl on a sacrum if that's all you have. But if you have the wherewithal to have all the seven bowls and you want to line them up based on what their chakra tunings would be. Yeah. Ryan, do you have anything, any kind of input or questions based upon all this you'd like to so do you use these bowls as a sort of an amplifier for the intention? Yeah, that's really cool. I'm so glad you put it that way. Yeah, so, you know, when I, when I started to work with the bowls myself, and I was trying to figure out how does intention into a body when we're working with cranial sacral therapy, and when I'm thinking about fluids and cells, and then how do I overlay that with the bowls? So generally what I, I've been playing with is listening to the, the, the rhythm and or, uh, and then adding in actually, I should say. So listening to the rhythm and then adding in a bowl and having the bowl be the precursor to a still point. Or sometimes looking if the bowl itself, if the vibration of the bowl enhances a still point. Or if I've done a still point, when the rhythm turns back on, does the bowl then enhance the return and make the new uh, flexion and extension flow of cerebral spinal fluid enhanced. Or, the other thing that I was doing is, that you can play the bowls by striking them or by rubbing them. When you rub a bowl, it brings up more of the vibration. When you strike the bowl, there's a vibratory effect, but the sound actually dissipates out a little bit faster. So if I place the bowl on someone's body and I'm doing some fascial work or diaphragm release and then I rub the bowl, sometimes it further enhances that fascial release. And that's probably because it's connected to the fluid in the ground substance of the fascia. So I've been playing with different places of that too. But I am finding that the bowl seem to enhance whatever it is that I'm doing on the body. And I would venture to guess that whatever body modality one does, that if you apply that technique and then place the bowl on the body and play the bowl, I'm pretty confident to think that it'll enhance it in everything in a positive way, regardless of what kind of work. And probably even energetic work, like Reiki. I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, I don't personally know how to do Reiki, but if I were working in the energetic field, I'm certain, of course, when we play the bowls around the energetic field that we're affecting our auric body, right? And again, uh, the whole matrix of resonance all around us as we all blend our energies together. So there's also Which, the sound dance going on, right? Yeah, at all times with yeah, vibration, right? Too. Yeah. Would you say? Um, do you ever use your bowls for direction of energy, like how you do direction of energy in cranium? Yeah. So uh, hypothetically, let's say I've arced onto a person's body, right? So what I'm looking for is an energy cyst. And if I find a spot, let's hypothetically say it was in someone's right hip, I could place the bowl right there and then use that exactly to direct energy. And when you put a bowl on someone's body, you anchor it with uh, three fingers. Right, so Seren always says that we don't want to anchor with our index finger, right, because that's fire, right? And I don't want it, I can't, you don't want to do fire in the middle finger, so we, we do tripod. But I find that when I'm holding the bowl on someone's body, I can almost feel the energy cyst vibrating even before I strike the bowl through the middle. Mm 
So I do feel like the metal enhances it somewhat. And then when I play, when I either play the bowl with a striker or I rub the bowl with a mallet, I find that it does uh, send, I can drive energy down or I can direct energy out depending on what I feel. It's almost like an acupuncture point I'm beginning to feel with the bowl. Uh, in, if, a, if a particular point has very low energy, it's considered Q, right? If it has too much energy, it's Jitsu. So I find that if I put my bowl wherever I found an energy system, I play it, I find that I can ask that energy to either go in or come out. Also, uh, when you're rubbing a bowl, counterclockwise draws energy in and clockwise draws energy out. And I don't know if that's the same or not when people needle, because I don't really know enough about needling. But I think there's something possibly that acupuncturists do when they turn needles, if they turn it clockwise or counterclockwise. So I know for a fact that if I wanted to put energy in and direct more energy in to open something, I would move in a counterclockwise fashion. Yeah. Yeah. How have your clients been responding? The ones that you've tried it with. I imagine yeah. not everyone. Yeah. But the ones no. that you have done it with. What's, yeah. What Everyone's saying? been absolutely astounded. Um, I've done uh, a few uh, group meditations using the bowls. And, uh, and, and we've done it with some vocalizing like we did today in class. Uh, and also some mantra chanting, and I found that everybody responded so positively to it, and also they all felt that it brought them to deeper states of relaxation. And most people reported that it enabled them to settle in and get quiet a lot faster. Um, personally, when I do one-on-ones with clients, I find the same thing, that people feel that they had deeper relaxation, that they went off into more uh, beta or theta brain state, where they were able to really get deep down. Some people, they said that, you know, they were able to have almost like lucid dreaming, you know, while they were on the table. Um, so I find that it's really, so far, it's, I've only had one person who felt that it was a little bit too much sensory input. Um, and obviously that is something that needs to be respected. Yeah. yeah. But other than that, it's pretty positive. Yeah. I think there has to be an awareness with people maybe that um, have sensory input issues or you don't know exactly where you're um, approaching someone at that time of day. So they may have already had too much overload maybe or done too many therapies in one day. Um, clearly, I think if it's an environmental sensory input, like just too much noise in the street, clearly the bowls definitely do calm down the autonomic system. Because it's the same thing like cranial sacral therapy, right? Or any kind of vibration, whether it's a drum or a rain stick or tuning forks or Tibetan healing bowls, what we're looking at is we're trying to dial down the autonomic nervous system and bring someone into more parasympathetic space so that their system can stay calm. So for the most part, people respond to it very positively. That's great. Yeah. Ryan, do you have any further questions? Uh, well, I was just contemplating about the, you know, using this with cranio and also having the cranial background is great because the listening stations and how you experience the inner wisdom of something before you're going to go in and do this, do that. That's right. Um, but I was, I was just connecting the bowls that you use and the sounds they make to still points because when when we would have still points or let's say the somatic release that went on uh, with michelle you go and it drops and right. and what that what i mean by that is whenever there's a still point the silence seems the silence seems to get louder yes. and yes. then and then you have to and that provides more space for whatever to be seen or come yes. up and then it'll drop down you know to deeper levels and it's like the silence just gets louder yes I feel like these bowls could really amplify the silence. Yeah, they and probably way. do because they're polyphonic. So when you strike a bowl, our ears, uh, I think the way our brains work with sound is that we hear one the first tone, right? And we go, oh, that's an F, or oh, that's a G, or oh, that's a C. But then eventually what's just, what we start to realize is that there are these polyphonic overtones. So we have multiple overtones, which is what's so important when when why the bowls are different than using just a single noted 440 tune bell or something. And so you're right, because then as that sound starts to dissipate, it also brings us to that place of silence, right? So when you're doing a group meditation and you're guiding people into their breathing and almost creating their own still points or resting points, I ask them to breathe and also follow the sound. 
follow the sound until you feel you've reached your silence. And it actually takes a very long time for the bowl to actually get quiet. And even when the bowl is quiet, it's still vibrating. And if you were to strike another bowl, the bowl next to it, even before you strike it, begins to vibrate as well. Interesting, the bowl next to it. So if you were to line up several bowls and strike one bowl, all the other bowls start to vibrate. Which is sort of going back to what you and I were talking about this morning, when all our vibrations are all vibrating together, right? So right now, we're all having these vibratory exchanges, all of us, right? We're all vibrating, all our energies are bouncing around the room, the lights in the room. So same thing with the bowl. So when you strike a bowl, we think, oh, that sound has ended, but that vib vibration has had an effect on the bowl next to it, or the cells that you've got it on top of. What's also beautiful and interesting that I, I omitted to mention is that if um, you can treat by putting some water inside a bowl as well if you pour a little bit of warm water I'd say about an inch or two inches of warm water you see a mandala fashioned inside the water inside the bowl and that mandala looks different on each person's body so even though it's the same D bowl right and a D bowl's mandala if I just put a D bowl on the floor and played it in a B bowl those two mandalas look different but then when I place them on a person's body from person to person, those mandalas in the water will look different as well. And, or how the vibratory pattern comes up is different as well. Because it's reflecting what's going on inside of us cellularly, through the metal, into the water, through the sound vibration, and then out. So that's also very interesting. So it's like, uh, this mandala has an energy cyst here. <laughs> that's right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's fun. really beautiful to watch. And then you can also see a change, and then actually, uh, the other thing that, um, working with uh, one client of mine um, at, at home, uh, I noticed that after I gave her cranial sacral therapy treatment, I played the bowls around her, gave her cranial treatment, then played bowls on her and around her, and they all sounded different after treatment. You changed so, her frequency, I think. Yeah, well, exactly, changed her frequency, Chris. So, you know, that's quite interesting, too, is that if you, even if you don't place the bowls on someone, but place them around a person, and you play them, then treat with whatever your modality is, massage, Reiki, acupuncture, cranial sacral therapy, and then play the bowls again, they sound different. So that is definitely telling us something about energy. Gina, I think you're onto something here. Yeah, this is totally. really fascinating. It's very exciting. I hope so. So, um, for anyone that's watching, tell them like how, where you are, how yeah. to find you, how to locate you, how to get a session. Super. So. Yeah. So um, I'm based out of New York City and Northeast PA. Um, my website is essentialbodywisdom.com, and you can always text me.